Ooh, it's hot. Okay, so what is the stock market? So the stock market exists so businesses can raise money to try and grow and expand um, their business without taking on any more risk or debt. Okay, so how do they do that? How do they raise the money? So the way they raise the money is that they actually ask you for it. Uh, it's beneficial to us to do this because um, if the company succeeds and it grows, then your money will grow with it. And uh, you're actually owning a percentage of the business. So say you really like Disney and you look at their financials and you decide, oh, they're actually a really great company. I think they could expand. I think more people would want to go to Disney theme parks. Maybe not now because we're in the middle of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. But um, Or maybe you think more people will enjoy Disney Plus, their streaming service and stuff like that. So you can actually invest or give them money uh, and hope that they grow and your money will grow. Um, the other way that they can actually, um, you can make money is through a dividend. So what will happen is that they actually reward you. So here you can see a dividend yield. They'll actually reward you for holding their stock maybe quarterly or annually. Um, they'll just send you a percentage of whatever it is that you're holding. Like say you're holding $500 and they're like, hey, we're going to give you three, four bucks for uh, holding our stock. Thank you very much. It's just kind of a as a token of appreciation. And um, of course, to incentivize you to maybe buy more of their stock. Um, so why invest in stock instead of things like gold or real estate? Um, even though those are investments have performed well over history, stocks have performed better over the long term and by large margins. There's all sorts of other advantages, of course. Um, there's not a lot of red tape. So if you're going to you know, invest in houses, if you don't have a large sum of money, then you got to get a mortgage and you know, deal with the real estate agent, all that stuff. Um, the other advantage is that, and you don't have to do that with the stock, uh, the other advantage is that uh, it's extremely cheap to get into the market. There's no minimum investment. And there's also tax advantages. Uh, the way our, our uh, legislation is actually set up right now is that they actually try and incentivize this um, form of investment for people. It, it's easier than ever right now to invest in the stock market because of online brokers. I'll make more videos on that type of stuff later. Today, I just wanted to talk about, again, what is the market and why it exists. Um, there's also, there's different types of investors, of course. There's institutional investors like BlackRock who have extremely large sums of money. Um, and then there's retail investors. That's like the little guy like us. So somebody like you and I will use something like Robinhood to invest, but you know, JP Morgan can, you know, throw, if they want to buy a portion of Disney, I don't know, they could throw a billion dollars if they wanted to at it. So we can't do that. Um, there's been a huge surge of investors lately. So people using things like this, like Robinhood, uh, retail or individual investors, I should say. Um, and it just seems like, more people want to be in control of their financial situation or, um, you know, maybe they don't trust the banks all that much with their money. But uh, on top of that, there's actually other uh, pros and cons to it. Right. So let me let me get into those. So say say you do trust the banks. You're an institutionalist and, uh, you know, JP Morgan has done right by you. You want them to handle your money. Well, why would you still consider maybe handling a portion of those stocks on your own? Buddy, not right now, okay? Um, so why would you consider... Uh, <laughs> sorry, my dog is wanting to play in the background. Um, anyhow, why would you consider maybe investing some money on your own instead of letting the big guys, you know, who went to Harvard handle it? Well, there's some pros and cons um, when comparing institutions to individual investors. 
institutions have the power to move markets yes yeah, so if they say they say tesla here wow it's up to 819 dollars again um say that they your jp morgan you throw a billion dollars at it well that's actually going to move the stock price up simply because you have so much capital and of course it's all driven by supply and demand so if you do that you can be you're actually a market maker you know um where they fall short is liquidity so say the volume here and I'll, I'll make a video on this later as well but say so 19 million trades happened today um the problem with that is this if you're JP Morgan and you want to dump all your shares overnight then you can't do that it's really really hard to do that because you've got so many of them right where if you're an individual investor you know um, you're not gonna have probably if you're not Mark Zuckerberg right you're not gonna have those large sums of money so it's actually better for you to um, invest on your own because you'll be able to get in and out of the market extremely quickly so you know say somebody's like ringing the alarm on a pandemic then you you can sell your shares you know and i'm not saying like oh you should if you've got a large sum of money you shouldn't invest money all by yourself you should probably have a financial advisor help you and all that good stuff but it is a good idea to um handle some of your assets on your own i believe um so yeah, so that's basically why the market exists and that's what the market is. I'll try and keep my videos short and to the point, but informative. Um, I won't sell out to the YouTube algorithm. However, if uh, you're interested in any of my future content, please subscribe.